Hi, I'm Neil. I'm ten. I, I love to play games. I love to read. I do scissors and pepper too. And that, that's it. Meet my mom, Trisha. This is my daddy, Tim Cousin. And this is my sister, Erin. She plays with me. And this is my dog, Abby. She is my friend. She sleeps with me and watches TV with me. Mom and Dad are dentists in Houston, Texas. Not long ago, I couldn't live told you. Now today, I can. Because of my mom. This is Neil Cashin. He's 10. In this picture, he's working on a math problem. When I met him two years ago, he couldn't read or write. Math problems? No way. This is Nicole Taylor. She's 24. When I met her in April 2007, she was having a hard time mentally staying in the room with us. She just seemed to be acting out scenes from a movie in her head, or something like that. The doctors were using the word dementia. This is John Connell. He's 30 months old. He is amazing. His therapist says he's at the top of the chart for development. What do these three have in common? They were all born with Down syndrome. Learning and developing skills is very slow and very difficult for children with this disability. Some can read, many cannot. Some can deal with money, others don't get the concept. Verbal skills are always difficult. Behavioral issues must certainly come into play. By the time a child with Down syndrome reaches six months old, he has already lost half, half of the brain neurons he was born with. That's certainly one of the contributing factors to this statistic. Over 80% of people with Down syndrome have signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. And this comes at a much younger age than the rest of the population. Many see a decline in progression after puberty. So what's special about Neil, Nicole, and John, they share a champion, a woman who is changing their world and helping them reach new milestones never thought possible. Neil is learning and progressing today at a rate far above average and certainly beyond what he has known in the past. Besides reading on a second grade level, he's now learning multiplication. She saw swimming about a big yummy bowl. Then, Dory. Nicole is back in the conversation. She was also on the precipice of being kicked out of school for behavioral issues when her answer arrived. You gonna sign me? When do you start school? Today. Today's your first day? Have you been to orientation yet? Mm-hmm. John is breaking all kinds of milestones. He was fortunate. His new journey began at nine months of age. Say yellow. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. There's the yellow. Is that a yellow S? So who is this champion? And what is she doing? Her name is Dr. Teresa Cody Cashin. She's Neil's mom. And she began her relentless pursuit to find a way for her son and the thousands like him to go further and beat the odds soon after he was born. For nine years, she got up early at 4 a.m. to spend three hours in research before starting her day. She spent years combing research papers from all over the world. What she found has turned the lights on for these kids. In the end, I'm just a mom who wants to help her kid. And for me, the best way to help him is to try to heal up what's wrong in his body and not leave him with his body destroying his brain and not leave him without any skills or being able to take care of himself. First off, 
My goal is Neil. Secondly, my goal is everyone else. I was about 35 when I got pregnant with Neil. I started having problems with the pregnancy. By the second ultrasound, I think I was about 20 weeks. Then we had a good idea that he had Down syndrome. I think I, I went into somewhat of a depression. I did cry a lot. I finally quit crying when my daughter Erin got upset because she's only four and she sees mommy crying and finally she got herself worked up and I, I, I realized I had to stop. My quest for help began right after he was born. Right when I saw him, it was like I wasn't sad anymore and I could now attack a problem and it's the first time I got on the internet and I started looking things up and I realized right then, okay, I gotta help him. In her reading, she found that it was not until 1959 that a French geneticist, Dr. Jérôme Lejeune, discovered the extra 21st chromosome that causes Down syndrome. This is the most common form of intellectual disabilities and it occurs in one in 700 births in the United States. But that's where medicine stopped. She was faced with the hard truth that there was no treatment for her son and nothing on the horizon. But she was determined to change that. When I studied this, I cannot believe how many people would say to me, because I told them, I'm going to figure out a treatment. And they were very worried I'd be disappointed. And I tell them, it's not about me. It doesn't matter if I'm disappointed. It's about him. The eight presidents of the United States are? John Washington, Sean Adams, um, uh, Thomas Jefferson, Sean, uh, James Madison, uh, James Mallow, uh, Andrew Ma Jackson, last, uh, Martin Brunanen. Who did you go with? Um, Riley, Stephen, Chase, and she. And were there other kids there besides them? Yeah. How many? Um, let me see. Why? I've two. just seen such an improvement in a short time in Neil and I really have been driven to share the information. Why? Because I, I, I want to help them have a better life. I know how hard it is. Two years ago, before any medication, he couldn't remember one sight word for any period of time. If he got it, it was gone by the next week. But I don't think he would have ever learned to read. Ooh, I think that's somebody from the Rescuers. No, not It's not Rescuers? What is it? That's Rescuers, yes. Is that some other movie? What movie? Um, I'm not sure what you said. Mm -hmm. Another movie? But the main problem is he really couldn't learn. And it's just absolutely amazing how much he could not learn. I had an older child, so I knew what it was like to have a three or four year old. And there was a curious professor interested in the world he did not ask questions. He could not verbalize. He had one sentence really by the time he was probably six. And may I have juice? Sling shot. Sling shot. Sling shot. Okay, got lots of letters. 
Well, I started working with Neil when he was very young, and we started on very basic things, where we was just trying to learn how to sing songs, try to learn his colors. Um, it was actually very much preschool. His attention span was very short. He was very stubborn. Um, he didn't. Um, like to do what I asked him to do. I, I kept having to divert him and get him back to the subject. And although that may be somewhat typical for a preschooler, it was extreme because he is a, a person with Down syndrome. What do you think he is? Ha, 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 ha. Can you say that again? Ha, 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 ha. What is, no. We're not, because hop, hop is something you do. You mean either a rabbit or a bunny? Hop, hop is like jumping. You can say rabbit or bunny. Then as he progressed, we still took a lot more steps backwards where he wasn't remembering, wasn't retaining what he had learned in the past. You know, we, you think you've made great strides, you think he's already learned this, you think he's learned all the letters or the sounds of the letters, and then you find out, well, he's lost some. He can't remember things at all. So every day you're working on keeping a very little amount of information. And you can't move on, because if you move on, he forgets what he just did. For him, every day was a brand new day. It's hard to live like that, though. I really was very worried about him. I guess that's what pushed me so hard. I really looked at Down syndrome as a disease. That extra chromosome just causes different pathways and different pieces to go wrong in the brain. What you see is just a symptom of the brain not working correctly. I just always thought, why can't we treat this like we treat other problems in our medicine? I know that there's nothing I can do about the chromosome. Genetic therapy is many, many, many years away. But why can't we treat the symptoms? Why can't we help the pathways? Now the problem was when Neil was born, he's nine now, there wasn't very good research about exactly what was going on. And what was developed within a couple years was a fairly good mouse model, meaning the mouse itself has Down syndrome. So then you can start figuring out what is going on in that mind. You know, do experiments, look at the cells, look at the brain, look at how it's connected. A lot of what I read didn't go anywhere. I mean, you know it's wrong, but there's no way to fix it. And this is Nicole. She forgot how to ride a bike. By now, she can. Wake up, Nicole. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. How many does this one need? Nine. Okay. One. Two. Three, four. And uh, my husband said that she's asking all kinds. He said she's starting to ask questions again. Right. she has stopped. And not only that, the school is saying that she's reading in paragraphs. And they're just giving her rave reviews about her. Oh, um, that's her good. Ad, you know, her attitude. And but her, she was, they were wanting to dismiss her last year, they right? They were ready to put her out because of her behavior. Oh. Um, her not just fitting in with the group. Right. And now they're saying how great she's doing, how she's reading again. Which one of these is A? Point to an A. There we go. Can we find another A? So now we have sack. Sack. We want to make it, we want it, so we make the word sack. T. X. Can you 
So what do we have? S F. And her artwork, remember yeah. the piece that I gave you? I didn't like it because it was choppy, not vibrant in color. But now she's starting to paint again, and the colors are bright. She's doing her crosses again. Oh. And the artwork is just fantastic. Oh, that's So great. everything seems to be improving. Down syndrome is a neurological disorder. It's not classified that way in medicine, but I think that's just because the definition occurred in 1956. So are we stuck with that definition forever? It's 50 years. See, it's not even considered a, really a medical problem. It's just a syndrome. What does that mean? I mean, it's a neurological disorder is what it is. And it's a neurologically developmental disorder and, and they decline as well. So Nicole, what do you want to be when you grow up? What capitalist? Can you say that again? Uh, what capitalist? Oh, work in a hospital? Oh, what do you want to do? Work with people. Work with people? Oh, do you want to help them? Uh, at 12, Nicole was a latchkey baby. And she would come into the house by herself. She would fix her own snack or salad, whatever. She would answer the phone. Um, can she answer the phone anymore? Mm -mm. She can't even come home by herself. But in kindergarten and uh, most of her elementary school, she was integrated into the mainstream. And she's always been with regular kids. And it was during the time she was at elementary school that she learned to ride a bicycle. And as anyone know, with uh, persons with Down syndrome, children, their coordination isn't great. And it's very difficult for them to learn how to ride a bike. She would go off with the church every year. I never went with her, never had to worry about her. Uh, um, she was just a social butterfly. And then around 18 or 19, if, any, if you know of the Jack and Jill, which is a, a black organization for bringing out girls and boys into society, she was asked to be in the botillion for the males who was uh, with Down syndrome. And she went through that with no problems. But it was at that time that I start noticing that she started obsessing with uh, washing her hands, staying in the bathroom frequently, uh, not looking um, at you when she would talk. She would ask frequent questions all the time. In fact, when we were around, they said, can you shut her up? I mean, she was just <laughs> always, <laughs> she was just always talking, always talking, and just a joy to be around and love to dance. And um, all of a sudden, she started um, just looking into space. <laughs> Not talking. Stop reading. And um, she would always been a stickler for her table manners. <laughs> and it had gotten to the point where I couldn't take her out. Cause she started eating with her hands <laughs> and um, not knowing how to sit at a table. And uh, then the jerk started and started... Um, looking and talking to things that weren't there. And then she was gone. She was just gone. And uh, I had to watch her all the time. Then she would start staying in the bathroom for hours at a time, just staying. And, um,
I lost her. I don't know where she went. And I, then I started taking her to a battery of doctors. And um, they did the um, uh, MRIs. There was nothing there. They did a psychologist. Said it was Alzheimer's. The IQ of these people goes down with age. So this has mm, led to the assumption that there is a degenerative process along life, even during the childhood. And of course, in the elderly, what we see is that um, there are uh, a premature neurodegeneration. There are signs of cholinergic alteration. This means the cholinergic system is a system in the brain that helps especially short-term memory to be established. So that if this system fails, uh, it is very difficult or even not possible to retain information for even short periods of time. So uh, basically these are the symptoms of uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, and uh, in fact Down syndrome has been considered as a model of pre-dimensional states in Alzheimer's disease. You know every night I put him to bed and another day was had gone by and another day went by that he didn't learn anything. I just loved him so much I just had to keep trying and I knew you know, I know science moves slowly, and I didn't have any time. He was already eight years old. Every person with Down syndrome is fighting the clock. They are destroying and damaging their own brain every day. If they don't balance it out, they are. After six long years of trial and error and many failed attempts at finding a treatment, Teresa's first major breakthrough finally came in 2004 from the Down Syndrome Research Center at Stanford University. In our system, the excitatory nerves tell our brain to go and the inhibitory nerves tell it to stop. And their discovery of the overactive inhibitory nerves in the Down Syndrome mouse led to her first definitive step for treatment. As we were studying the first example of, of, our, of a mouse model of the Down syndrome, we started to wonder whether or not they may have too much inhibition. And so we did recordings in the brains of these animals, taking slices of the brain recording. And sure enough, there was like no learning in these synapses. And so then we asked whether or not if you block inhibition in these um, neurons, whether you would actually get some level of learning back. And sure enough, the learning came back. So this was like, oh wow, there is indeed a problem here in which you just can't learn because there's too much inhibition. So I had a really, really talented student join the lab, Fabian Fernandez. And Fabian and I decided that we would go on this journey together in which we were going to ask the penultimate question. And that is, is could you actually give this mouse model of Down syndrome some very low, low doses of GABA drugs and see whether or not it would improve learning. And so neither one of us really believed that it would happen. We said, we, but we have to try, because that is the most important experiment we could possibly do. We started giving these animals this drug. And the first time, we gave them just one little aliquot of this drug, and it did nothing. So then we started asking, well, what happens if you give this drug repeatedly? So we started giving it once a day. And really remarkable, already after one week, we already started seeing that these mice could recognize these objects better than they could the week before. And after three weeks, we could not distinguish these animals from wild-type animals and their ability to recognize these objects. So the drug was just seemed to be awakening and making them aware of the world around them. So this was huge. The two of us were was really excited by this observation. And if you would have looked back, 1995, 19, I mean, this time when the mouse was first being developed, uh, this idea of treatment was essentially ludicrous. Um, you know, and you, you go to certain parts of the country, University of Minnesota, where they, they've developed this hypothesis for developmental stability, which basically is slang for um, irreversible changes in brain development. Um, you know, the outlook was pretty bleak. And now you've had two, three, four demonstrations that drugs are able to ameliorate cognitive conditions in mice that seem to parallel uh, those in people with Down syndrome. So this was really an incredible finding, and it really argued strongly that 
over inhibition was really the root of the cognitive impairment um, in these mice and perhaps also in Down syndromes. Stanford really uncovered and laid out the problem. And the problem is, is that the system, the brain, was shutting itself down. And the more it shut itself down, the more it shut itself down. It was like a spiral downward. So you could start off maybe pretty good young. And then with time and the brain shutting itself down, it gets worse and worse and worse. And that's why you see kids start off pretty good and they just keep falling further behind and every year they don't get better, they're getting worse. This was the beginning of the breakthrough treatment Dr. Cody found. The protocol is a combination of five pieces consisting of medicines, herbs, and vitamins. The first one was ginkgo biloba and it was, it is a GABA antagonist. But what that does is allow the brain to balance itself out and not shut itself down. Because right now, it's shutting itself down. It d is not allowing the nerves to fire. So you cannot make memories if you don't fire nerves. I think the components that are in the ginkgo biloba extract are just ideal. They, they really fit well with the studies that we've been, study, been, been, been doing and that they really improve um, the balance of inhibition in the brain. He took the ginkgo first and that took about a month. And all of a sudden I saw a glimmer. I wouldn't say even a flame, maybe one sparkle from a sparkler. All of a sudden he remembered just a little more. So I took him out of school and brought him home. And I started working with him. That was a long summer. You know, if you've never really learned and all of a sudden you're able to, it's hard work to think. And he was very resistant. After Neil had been on ginkgo for one year, Teresa decided to videotape him. She wanted to look at the differences to see if he really had grown or if it was just in her own mind. Dad, Miss Doc went to bed. Good night, said, said Papa. Eight. I. I. Eight. I am. I am eight. After Neil was on the ginkgo biloba for a year, he was doing so well, I really needed to tell other people. So I spread the word on the internet, I built an internet site, I called the gentleman who manufactures vitamins for Down syndrome and now he's recommending it. And I knew hundreds of kids were getting help, but I knew they needed more. When Neil was six months old, I talked to a researcher in New York, and she told me how misshapen the neurons are in the brain and how half of them are gone by about six months old, when the baby's six months old. I just thought, wow, I don't know how he's going to get better with what he has. So. Last year, there was a study, they gave Prozac to that little mouse, and when they looked at it, that mouse had grown, doubled the neuron count in the brain in three weeks. And I showed it to my pediatrician, and he was ecstatic. He said, this is really good. Now, we haven't seen any side effects. Um, negative side effects except that he's thinking a lot better and what I see is that he can think in depth Four, the five, six okay took away one okay 
One, two, three, four, five, six. The idea of using Prozac is a little bit of an exception for mainstream individuals who really think of Prozac as an antidepressant. Um, and that, of course, could have its own beneficial effect. But what's also noticed, known about Prozac is that this is a drug that actually it stimulates stem cells to grow. And in our own studies, we know that um, the drugs we've been giving also potentiates or facilitates uh, stem cell growth. So it's an interesting combination. And um, I think the proof is in the pudding. When you mix the cocktail together and you see an improvement, then that's um, really something. And back on the lawn, some we go. Some, it didn't. Try that again. In North. Dinosaur. Live in a forest. Good job. They will call triceratops. And each one has three. In a year, he's gone from through kindergarten, first grade, and he's working on second grade work. Living down. The difference in his life from not being able to read yeah, to reading never. changes never. his whole world. Yes. What time is it now? 9.30. Very good. Very good. Which one is the circle? Point to the circle. Very good. What other shape do you know? Triangle. Show me the triangle. Very good. What other shape do you know? That's two, but what about this one? Three. Oh. So then the answer is what? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Right. I oh, know. That's a hard one. Here. Remember John? He started ginkgo at nine months of age. He stopped the damage early. Watch the difference. It truly is amazing. Yay! This is John. He's two. Every time my mom sees him, she cries because my mom thinks he is awesome. Yay, great. Square on. Try. Yes, good job. Last one, triangle. Show me where that one goes. Put it on. Beautiful, good job. Yay. That's beautiful, yay. How long has he been doing that? Uh, we probably start working with the shapes approximately a month ago, a month and a half ago. Yeah. How long did it take before he could put the puzzle together like that? Oh, I would say two weeks, and after the, on the third session, he was able to match and recognize them. Well, I started working with him when he was four weeks old. He was six weeks uh, preemie earlier. So that's something that we need to add to these developmental skills or motor skills. Fine motor skills are between 15 and 18 months, and they are absolutely great. His muscle tone is helping, his strength also. Okay, when you say his fine motor skills are 15 to 18 months equivalent, is that for a Down syndrome child or any child? Any child. Those skills are age equivalent to 18 months old. Cognitively, also is helping that he's uh, advancing so well in those areas. Row, row, row your boat. Row, boat. Good. Oh, you gonna do it again? Row, row, row your boat. 
No, no, feet down. Row, row, row your boat. work with a lot of children his age? Yes. Okay, where is he on the scale? Is he at the bottom, the top, the middle? He's at the top of the scale. He's, the, he's the highest level kid. Uh, right now we're working on zippers and zipping. We're working on self-feeding with a spoon. He can do a couple of bites, but not. It's, he's not completely independent with that. Um, we are also working on the pincer grass, and that is part of the Step, developmental steps prior to pre-writing skills. We're working also on scribbling on his own. Good job, look. Since he started the Prozac, is he yes. learning way faster than he did before or has it just been steady? No, he's learning faster, he's improving his, as I mentioned before to you, his attention, concentration, and uh, cognitive skills are one of um, the highest. Go. He's more active. He is more active. And his gross motor skills, as everybody can see, are fantastic. What you saw him hitting the, the baseball, uh, that is amazing. I don't see any two years old, even a regular kid, if you want to call it, being able to use both hands and have the coordination of hitting a baseball. So is John's progress that remarkable? After all, many young children with Down syndrome do well in their early years. And is Neil doing better because he's two years older and he should be progressing? Or is something different really happening with his brain? This was the question in my mind until I met parent after parent of a Down syndrome child with the same report. Their children aren't progressing at a normal rate or anything near that. And sadly, sometimes they don't progress at all or their progress stops at a tragically young age. Frustration and weariness are in ample supply, both for parent and child. It didn't take long to understand why Neil's mom couldn't give up. What's your dog's name? I am. Tizzy, what's your dog's name? Hey. What are you doing? When there's one special page that what are you doing? Cecilia has stopped learning. She has progressed till about six and a half or so. She was learning and then she stopped. So we haven't seen any academic adva advancement in probably close to two years now. She does well writing her name and she knows her ABCs. She counts to about 20, but not consistently, and skips numbers. And she consistently goes back to the same thing and doesn't, you know, doesn't move any further, doesn't have any interest, it seems, in learning anything more. A. A. B. B. C. E. F. Then what, what's after F? Right here. What is it? Yeah. What goes after F? Cecilia can't read at all. I think that her, her social skills are lacking. It's not for lack of trying. We've, we've tried and, and we keep trying um, every step of the way. As she gets older, her social skills seem to um, get worse yes. rather than better. And, it, and she displays a lot, of, a lot of aggression just out of nowhere, a lot of mood swings. Jacob is 14. His academics uh, were poor. It was very frustrating for me working with him. Uh, and actually, in the past several years, I just haven't worked with him very much academically. Uh, I've always considered myself a patient mother. And I would get very frustrated working with him because I didn't know if he just really couldn't do the work or if he was just yanking my chain because he didn't want to do the work. I got the loss. I said I want to pick a good price of him now. And it's such a good thing. He wasn't holding on to things. You know, the information was just, I never knew from one day to the next if the information was going to be there. 
As far as his ability to play with other children, I didn't see any change in that. He would still go off and be by himself. All the time, he would isolate himself. Cristobal, at this time, he's 11 years old. How far would you say he is in his development? Well, I will say he's about four years old, somewhere around there. He knows the ABCs and he can count. Sometimes he can keep numbers, but only he can count like from one to 15. Can he read? Not at all. You count in the first box. Oh! Right, and then you write the number here. Oh, <laughs> It's not being easy. It seems like if we don't do repetition, he doesn't keep it. Movie. Movie? Yes. What movie? What's your favorite movie? It's fine. Hmm? It's fine. Which one? Yes, fine. Pinocchio, Winnie the Pooh. Pooh. You like Winnie the Pooh? Yes, ma'am. Can she count money, tell time? M oh, time on the hour, half hour, money is, we're continually going over it to understand that this cost you $4.99. The concept is not there. How would you assess her reading level? I'd say first and second grade. There's, as far as comprehension, we go over that because a lot of the comprehension is not there. As far as remembering, you know, what did you do yesterday? Or what did you do this morning? It, it, somehow it's not clicking. The who, what, when, where questions are tough. Does she know her ABCs? Yes. How long did it take her to learn them? Maybe about a year or so. The third piece were fatty acids to reduce the inflammation. Because we know that inflammation causes Alzheimer's. So we'd really like to reduce inflammation. And there's lots of ways to reduce inflammation, but not a lot of ways that we could live with. So I went and studied with a woman named Patricia Kane, and she has come up with a formula of the right ratios of fatty acids, and it triggers an entire pathway that restores what inflammation has done. This is very new in science. The other piece is called phosphatidylcholine. It is just the building blocks of your brain. It's what your brain is made out of. And we're trying to rewire the brain. So I'm trying to give the brain like the bricks at a construction site. I'm trying to bring it what it needs to build with. The, the last piece was Focalin XR, which is a Ritalin derivative, which really increased attention and focus. And I'm not sure that every kid needs that. I'm not sure that they'll need it for life. But if you don't start really thinking until you're about seven and a half years old, it's very difficult to kick it into gear. And it really, really helped to focus the kids and get them working. This isn't a magic pill or a magic formula. This wakes them up so that they can learn. Basically, Neil was a two-year-old in an eight-year-old body. But the good news is, is that he went through the developmental stages very quickly. You just have to know they're gonna get better. So how do you spell dog, Neil? Okay. D O C. Ooh, very good. How do you spell cat? C A T. Uh, how about bulldog? B U L L. Bulldog. Okay. D O C. I thought in the beginning it would have to be a new drug, and I dreaded that. It takes 10, 15 years to get a drug through the FDA. And then when it was known medicines with long histories, 
I got down on my knees and I thanked the Lord. This is saving us. We're too small of a population to have them make money. What's your favorite story? AC. Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not bad boys. Neil, tell me what happens in Pinocchio. Well, but my nose. So what about it? Why does he have a lying nose? What happened? Because happens? it grew, grew, grew. How come? Because he's lying. Who did he lie to? People. People? Yeah. Yeah? So how did Pinocchio come to life? Be because make a, a wood. Turns out Lee, Pinocchio come to life. And St. Pinocchio woke him up. And then, Pinocchio, what's happening to you? Well, when people say we come, your conscience be God. And when someday a real boy, real boy, come. I couldn't help but share, because Neil's getting better and better. He's happier and more cooperative, and he's able to do more. He shake him. Going to some Word of Neil's remarkable progress began to spread through the Down syndrome community. One by one, parents began to ask Teresa about this new protocol she had put together. A small number of children around the country were trying it and doing well. They were all improving. John Connell was one of them. But many were afraid to try it. There's resistance from parents who are fearful of hurting their children. Parents who, you know, been told if you just treat them normally, they can do it. Neil wasn't gonna do it. Didn't matter what I did. Externally, his problem was internal. And I think it's a lack of understanding. This is a brand new idea. It's a paradigm shift. And once you have to shift a whole idea base, that's hard. It's hard for people to do. I understand that. Opposition and resistance are two things that don't stop this woman. She continued to share Neil's story because she was convinced this protocol would improve other children's lives. By the spring of 2007, she had a plan to prove this treatment would work. Six mothers and I got together and we started a trial. So they agreed to have their children tested and agreed to get on the protocol. Teresa decided to start a small study of sorts. She hired a psychiatrist, Dr. Nell Schwartz, to test the children's IQ and academic level before starting the treatment and every six months that followed. Right here. Each child also had to visit their doctor and get his participation, right. as he would be monitoring their health and writing the necessary prescriptions during this trial. Can you take a deep breath for me? And in six months, the before testing and after testing, their nonverbal IQs went up. They went up between seven to 19%. Actually, it was 19.7%, so that would be closer to 20%. The whole study with these kids all fell into place so nicely, so easily. The mothers walked into my office or they called me on the phone. I videotaped each child before starting the treatment and every six months after. The results are going to amaze you. What is happening with these children? Well, it's groundbreaking. We are watching history being made. And most importantly, we're witnessing children's minds being set free to explore their world in a new way. Remember Martha? A few of her new accomplishments are learning to play tennis and grocery shop with her friend Emily. One, two, two, four, three, three, four.
four. Four. Good. Now, what else do we need? Strawberries. How many? And the last One. six months that she's Five been on the protocol, it, it's almost like everything's changed. I've had ten and a half years of a child going at a certain rate, a very slow rate. I was used to that. I was prepared for her to do some things in life, but I was not prepared for her to do as much as she's doing in this short of time. You know, we were chugging along at, in first gear. That's how fast we were going with Martha's life. Uh, right now, we're up into third. She's sitting still, she's not fidgeting as much, she's not getting distracted nearly as frequently by events that are surrounding her. Just even six weeks ago, she, when we first started playing tennis, she would go say hi to absolutely every single person in the court, at least three times within a 30 minute time period. So she's actually following directions. The first time I tell her, maybe the second time I tell her where before, it was eight, 10 times, just in the last six weeks the difference has been that tremendous. But over the last six months, it's gradually gotten to that point and then there's just been the sharp improvement in the last six, eight weeks. Well, as you've worked with other kids with Down syndrome, have you seen them improve like that too? Does their attention get better? Do they get focused as you work with them and they learn the game? Um, yes, but it takes a much longer period of time. I mean, what I would see in six weeks from her and where we are may take a year and a half to two years if we ever get there uh, with a Down syndrome child. She will do math now. Before, we were doing manipulatives, little squares, and I'd have it right next to the paper. It, it was, you know, like a calf at a new gate. No understanding whatsoever. Now, with just the little circles on the pages, she can count them. I mean, she can do that now. This must have wrapped. Oh, please. Sat, so it. I can't cook. Everyone is working with her sees that she's correcting mistakes. When she does something wrong, she'll look at you and go, uh-oh, no, not right. So she knows it's wrong. Whereas before, who, you know, she could care less. It doesn't mean anything to her. Last night, we were sitting there, I was reading a book. She took a uh, soup, one of those super balls, the super rubber balls, and because of the flooring is hard, she was bouncing it. So it's going all over the place. At one point, went under the couch. So she looks at me, Mom, get it. I'm like, I'm not getting it. So she goes and she tries to get it herself, number one. Mom, get it. I'm not getting it. She goes out. She comes back. She has a flashlight from her dad's office. She got the hanger from her closet and came out, turned the flashlight on, and is trying to fish the ball out with the hanger. It's too short. Mom, get it. I'm not getting it. Figure it out. She's still trying to get it. Finally, she gets up, comes out in the utility room, gets a broom, comes back, fishes the ball out. I did it. I said, I know you did it. Now put everything away. Put everything away. She went back to playing. She wouldn't have done that before. Uh, the IQ jump was 10%. I didn't expect that. Uh, her math computation went up 68%. I didn't expect that. Her grade level. Never ever does a child with Down syndrome keep up with the grade. So in six months time, a typical kid will keep up with six months or they'll surpass it. Our kids don't. I mean, they, they, they just don't do that. The fact that in six months she went up four to nine months is unheard of. It just doesn't happen. This changes the whole makeup, the whole landscape, everything. It's a whole new world. It, it, it's exciting. There's hope. I'm excited for those who are going to start earlier. Tell me again about what you've been doing. Well, I've been getting the game. I said uh, there was a movie, and I played Donkey Kong, and I played Battle 2. There's a big difference in Jacob today than six months ago. There's a huge difference in him, in his ability to relate to people, to want to be around people, to uh, hang with other kids. Uh, it is tremendous, the things that I see today from six months ago.
He's like a different kid in a lot of ways. He really is, and he is happy. There is an underlying happiness to him. There, it's like a contentment in him. He wants to be around us. He will turn off the electronics by choice now, not all the time. I mean, he will still love to just plug in and stay plugged in, but he will turn that stuff off and come be with the family. He spent Saturday, several days ago, with some friends of ours, he spent the entire day, and he played the entire day with their two little boys. That wouldn't have happened a year ago. He would have gone off and found a place to be alone and hibernated and just played by himself all day. He didn't do that. He played army men with these kids. He came home talking to me about the things that he had done. He described in detail the games that they had played, the toys they had played with, the things they had done, what they had talked about. He's able to express his personality uh, to a greater degree than he could before. It's like things are just kind of opening up, you know, making more sense. Things are clicking in his head. You can see it. That's the biggest thing. Stuff is just starting to connect. The dots are starting to connect for him, and he's figuring things out, and it's, it's making sense in a way that he's remembering it tomorrow, you know, and he'll remember it the day after that. And the biggest thing for me, I think, too, is just this thing that's happening with relationships and his desire to want to be with people and not run away and be by himself all the time because it's so hard to communicate. That's the hardest thing for him. And I think for many of our kids with Down syndrome, it's just so hard for them to understand what you're saying to them and then to turn it around and give it back to you, which is what you have to do to have conversation, which is what you have to do to have relationships. And I don't want him to be alone all of his life. Before he was on the protocol, he would talk with people, but he would mostly just, you know, say, hi, I'm Jacob, you know, tell them his age or whatever they ask him. But um, lately he's actually been asking people questions, which is a really big thing. He would never ask people questions. And uh, lately he's been asking, what does this mean or what does that mean? And that's, that's a pretty big thing. You know, if my mom is talking with him, or um, telling him a story or something, he'll stop her and say, what is this? And um, so it tells that he's paying more attention and he is curious and um, he's just been, been a lot more attentive. Remember Nicole's mom told us that she couldn't take Nicole out to eat anymore because of her table manners? Uh, I videotaped this eight months after she started the protocol. Now I'm getting my daughter back, and, and she's fun. She was fun to be with, and I enjoyed being with her. But it was such a trial during those five year, that five-year period. And now to see her coming back, it just, and then at the play, everybody there that knew Nicole was talking about the change that had taken they place. They see her back. They see her back. They Aww. said, this is the old Nicole, you know, because she was performing. She was performing for the audience. Aww. She thought everybody was there for her, like she always does, you know. I left Nicole over to some friend's house with my sister, and she called to tell me how they thought she had changed. They said, she's coming back and oh. how much talking she had done and interacted. Nicole was always social, and to see her come back now is uh, something that uh, I can't express. Oh, you that's know, wonderful. I had truly lost her, and uh, now to know that she is coming back. I can't thank you enough. Oh. You know, I can't. I can't. I know, can. it's just great. It is, is just it great. is, it is. So I hope that Neil, because of your hard work, never have 
or any other person right. that is going through this would never have to go through what I had to go through for the last past six years with Nicole. Oh, I know. And it was just a blessing to see you in that doctor's office that day. And so it's just God's gift to us. And I'm I ask so that happy. you continue the work that you're doing. And I will. I will. Great. Don't to all worry. Of us. It, it's really so special that Nicole can come back. She's the most dramatic. I didn't know why I took her in the study. She didn't really fit with the group. But who could turn her away? I mean, it broke my heart. Because you know that she did really well at one time. At 12, she's coming home as a latchkey kid. And at 25, you can't leave her alone at all. And in about eight months, she's back, she's talking, she's reading, she's riding her bike. That's a miracle. Let's get back to John. He's three now. Remember, he started ginkgo at nine months and the rest of the protocol at 21 months. What's different about John is that he stopped the damage early, and now he's developing at an almost normal rate. I'll show you what I mean. Hand. That's right. That's right. I. I. D. Where's your I? I. I. Okay, I met John about seven weeks ago, recently. Um, the other times I saw him, he was a little baby. And I thought he was a sharp little baby, but when I saw him seven weeks ago, he was totally off the charts for a child with Down syndrome. His level of attention was so great, his eye contact, and he paid, he just really listened to me and watched my mouth and was imitating every letter or word I said to him. I've worked with kids for 35 years with Down syndrome, and he really, really is bright. And I just knew it was more than a bright child with Down syndrome because I've seen, I've met, you know, pretty smart kids along the way here and there, but he was really awesome. Push. Push in. They do start behaving more like a typical child would when you start adding these things that, that their body needs. He has started to kind of stomp his feet, you know, when, when you try, like a two-year-old does. He's, he is moving into, even before he turned two, like my daughter, he's starting to move into what they call the terrible twos. And I know it sounds bad, but I was absolutely excited when I saw him do that because you know, he wanted something, and it made him mad. And that wouldn't be cute if he was 10 years old, but it was very, it was very age appropriate. He was, he's trying to assert his independence. And it's what I saw with my daughter at the same age, and it, it actually made me very happy. Where's the other blue? Ah. There it is. Okay, put it in, please. And where is the other red? Oh, oh, wait. Where's the other red? That's green. Where is red? Oh, wait. There's blue, but I don't see red. Oh, there it is. You found it. Put it in, please. Ah. 
Thank you. Say one, two, three, four. Great. Let's do your family's names first because you do that best. What is that? Who is this? Dad. That's Dad. Who is that? Daddy. Who's Mommy. Mommy. That's right. Who is this? Sissy. Sissy. I think. I want candy, please. I, I, I Blue. What color? Blue. Blue? I don't have blue. What color? Another color? Yeah. What color? What color would you like? Blue. Which color? Blue. But no blue. I don't have blue. What color would you like? Black. Yellow? Yellow. Yellow? Yeah. Yellow. Listen to John as he names his world. Dog, boy, and leaf. It's amazing. <laughs> what color is this, John? What do you hear? Tell me a sentence. I. I. He. Hear. He. What is that? that. <laughs> Airplane. Good job. You know that. That's awesome. When I saw him a couple months ago, I just started crying. It's so good. It's so good. He's going to have a different life. Did you test Neil? Yes, I gave him a second grade reading inventory test. It can be given at the beginning, the middle, and at the end of second grade. And it tests him on um, phonics, spelling, sight words, and he read 76 words per minute, which at the end of second grade, he should be 90 words per minute, so I was really happy on that. He's really surprised me at what he does know and his level of attention, I think, gets better. And this is the first time I've ever worked with him, and I was really surprised at how well he can read and comprehend. And he catches me if I make a mistake. And uh, there's a lot of things I wouldn't have thought he would have known that he does. His predicting of what's gonna happen at the end of the story, um, drawing conclusion as to what should have happened or what could have happened, he's excellent at that. I think his comprehension skills are, they're great. Uh, higher level thinking skills, he really has a, he's very perceptive. He was very typical. He was not above average on, on anything that he was, he was doing. He was the same type of personality that the parents have to deal with as far as trying to, to teach them to learn. Now it's much easier. Um, because he does retain what he's been taught um, and that there's progress, so that's exciting. Neil continues to make progress. He can retain what he's learned. He's making great strides. He's almost up to his current grade level, which is astounding. Another thing that's very remarkable is his ability to speak. You know what I think? I think that this is a God-given protocol, and I think God is making, driving me. I'm so driven. I, I, I can't stop. I think it's the right thing. I think it's my journey. I think it's my duty to bring it. I think that, uh, I'm so it's not pictotoxin, but it's another it's like, drug that does it. It's like tetra. It's picrotoxin, PTZ. Is a drug. P PTZ is like. Well, I got together about eight women because they were like-minded women and we want to have the best for our kids, 
and we can read and understand the science. Yeah, but let me, let me, three year old boy had more drive. Let me, let me get we are trying to figure out how to help the other people with kids with Down syndrome to not be so afraid to get help for their children. If so many people, their reason there is no treatment in Down syndrome is it's like a bull in the frog. It's so slow that parents. Yes. 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 Their kid looks pretty normal, and then they're a little less, and then it's such a slow mm -hmm. deterioration when you're that so it's easy for parents to, to just end up thinking somehow they were going to get a different result. And then and all that's of the, the professionals around you are always telling you how great your kid is doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. The parents are now going out and trying to recruit doctors for other parents with Down syndrome kids. They have become active. They are um, excited. They can see it. Now, I'm creating mini-me's. <laughs> they, they are confused and getting frustrated why people don't listen to them. <laughs> and they're, ex they are doing their part now to try to spread the word. So that he would study the synapses because they look different and they function differently. And like when they look at the nerves, there's these spines that come off the nerve and they should be fat. That is like the beginning of making nerves. Like babies have all of those, but they stay in that state because the inhibitor is on. After the weekend, Teresa called Dr. Garner at the Stanford Down Syndrome Research Center. She wanted to thank him for his groundbreaking research that led to the protocol that was changing her son. Well, the phone call was more than she expected. He told her he had been following her and was aware of her courageous actions. He was excited to hear more and invited her to Stanford to meet with him. So how are you feeling right now? Well, I'm a little nervous. I have wanted to meet with him for a long time. And I think that uh, he's going to be able to help us a lot. And he's very excited. And Teresa, are you excited? I'm the most excited I've ever been. Ever? Ever. I promise, ever. This is the biggest day. Damn. Hey, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, let's go. Come on, Neil. Walk me up. No. <laughs> hey, I can't go. I love you, I love you. <laughs> no, I can't go. No. <laughs> Teresa is kind of one of our little angels from God. Um, so, you know, the, the problem is, is that animal studies are just that. They're animal studies. And um, Teresa, in her wisdom and her desire to try to help her own um, son, Neil, she thought a lot about what we were doing and said, um, well, I think that we can actually make some steps forward on uh, myself, which is like very bold and courageous. A really interesting possibility for us to think about is whether or not one could begin to test this model that we've been developing both in your son and in, our, in, in mice to see whether or not we could do it quicker. But what's interesting is with the cocktail um, of the ginkgo biloba extract and Prozac, these are actually drugs that you can use now, or actually some of them are just nutritional supplements. Um, so since they are seeming to be beneficial in Neil and several other kids, it seems like it would be very worthwhile to go and evaluate in a clinical trial whether they work. I asked Dr. Garner if he would consider doing a clinical trial of her protocol. Actually, I think this is a great idea. I, I spoke with a clinician in psychiatry last week and we actually discussed that very thing to actually go and do a trial with the formulation that you have. I think we should really entertain that and see whether it's possible. Um, obviously, that's something that we could do now, whereas any drugs that I'm working on will take a couple more years, so why wait? I think if we can bring some validation to this, that would be um, super. So, you know, I'm going to be really thrilled to work with Teresa to see whether we can put something together that would be, you know, help validate um, what she's finding. I am so sure now 
that it's right, then now I don't want to give up because now I'm really sure. A year ago, I was theoretically sure. Now I'm living it, and it's absolutely right. Well, that's Teresa, a trailblazer and a mom. Always believing there's more, she considers this the first generation of protocol. She's already working to find better medicines, better treatments. I asked her once if she ever thought a time would come when she would say, that's enough. Her answer won't surprise you. She said no. You know, there's no stronger driving force than a love a mother has for her child. I'll let Neil's dad, Tim, have the last word. I think that what is at the core of all of us is to have freedom. And if we can, if we can have Neil obtain freedom, then I think we've done our part. Stronger and stronger